Hey everyone, Matt. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to my 100,000 mile review of my Tesla Model S 75D. Well, it's not exactly 100,000 miles, it's like 98 something. But unless something drastically changes in the next 1,500 miles, consider this the 100,000 mile review of my Tesla Model S. I'm gonna be talking about my ownership experience, why I went with this vehicle as opposed to a Model 3 new, um, some modifications I've made to the car. I'll go into some costs and whatnot, you know, maintenance items, other upgrades I've done, and just what my overall experience has been owning a 2017 Model S in 2024. So let's get into the video and thanks for watching. So here is my 2017 my model s it's a 75d a dual motor it has enhanced autopilot it does not have full self-driving although it's capable um, with the upgrades that have been done to the car but you know at first glance it's really hard to tell this from say a 2024 model s there are some features to look for for example uh, the fog lights on uh, pre-refresh, right? Probably pre-2021 Model S is a little different. I think it's got a little wider body on the uh, 2024s. Um, the tail lights are a little different on the newer ones. Um, charge ports a little different on the newer ones. But, you know, most people seeing this vehicle really don't know. <laughs> that it is a 2017 and not something newer um i think it's held up really well and um yeah just had a just a overall solid experience with the vehicle let me show you the interior a little bit uh, i think i'll talk about kind of like wear and tear first item um you notice my driver's door handle not extending well it's broken <laughs> but fortunately if i give it enough of a push oh yeah see that's how it's done. I can open it. Um, I debated getting this repaired. It costs about $400 to have mobile servers come out and fix it. But as long as the motor's still working, I can get into the car. I figure why spend that much money to get it fixed? When it dies, what am I going to do? I mean, I could try to like take the door panel off and, you know, do it myself, but I probably will not be doing that. But um, I have the cream interior in this car. And I mean, these seats, I, look how, I mean, I don't have a ton of people in passenger seat, um, but the interior has held up so well. This has a carbon fiber trim. There's a gigantic um, iPad screen here. Let's mute that. Um, got the screen behind the dash there. Stocks on this car, big, juicy steering wheel, love it. Uh, but even the driver's seat, I mean, there's a little wear like down here. You kind of see just from the crease of my behind, right? Um, but, you know, the bolstering and the stitching, everything in the car has really held up pretty well. Um, here's the back seat. I got my my kid seats back here. Um, but it's, you know, it's a really spacious car, especially with the, the glass roof. Um, I think some of these cars maybe came with a sunroof at some point, but I'm glad it didn't come with that. I know there's some issues that unfold with that. Um, but overall, like the wear and tear of the car has been pretty good. This has been a problem since I got it. It just, the clip's broken this. So, I mean, it's functional. Just every once in a while, I kind of have to snap it back into place. But, um, you know, great trunk. There's sub trunk storage here. Obviously, the front trunk is uh, pretty similar to what you'll find in a newer car. But yeah, overall, it's been a wonderful vehicle. Um, one that I do about 35,000 miles a year in, if you can if you can believe it. So I thought I'd just go through the specs of this Model S because, you know, back in like 2015, 16, 17, there were a ton of different options that you can get with the Model S. And if you're in the market for a use one of these, which you know, they're, pre I mean, for Tesla, like this is their flagship car, right? 
I mean, this vehicle now, 1775D, even with like sub 50,000 miles, you're probably going to find them in like the 30K range. Um, this was not the case a couple years ago. Depreciation has been brutal, but that's how it goes. I mean, what are you going to do? You can't time that sort of stuff. I, you know, and at my point in time, I need to get a new vehicle and, you know, I'm glad with my decision, but, um, there are a ton of different options that come with these cards. I'm just going to read off the spec sheets for mine. So this does have ultra, ultra high fidelity sound. It has like the beefier sound system. I think it has two subwoofers. Um, it was a premium upgrade, part of this premium upgrades package that came with the car, which included um, the Sub-Zero weather package, which is full heated seats, heated steering wheel. Um, this one, like I said, has carbon fiber. This has the cream interior. Um, I think like this, this headliner is a, a, allegedly some premium feature, like this light headliner. Um, glass roof, obviously. This car does have air suspension. I've had zero issues with it so far, knock on wood. Um, it's a super comfortable ride. Um, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that it does have air suspension. Um, light headliner, like I said, came with 19 inch wheels, um, dual motor, right? Uh, this car came in, I think 75, 90, 100 variety of the battery pack this is this the smaller battery pack and I still get you know on a hundred percent state of charge looking at my my um my dash it'll tell me about a 230 miles of range I think maybe your original was 250 so 100,000 miles you know according to the vehicle I've only lost like 20 miles of range it's pretty minimal um again I don't I, I never keep the car on miles when I'm driving it um, it's always on percent, but just to give you some idea of like what the, the, the battery degradation is, 5% maybe, not much at all, nothing for me to really have to worry about. Um, it does not have free supercharging. Uh, I think they stopped the free supercharging program in this vehicle in like July of 2018. This is a, sorry, July of 2017. This is a December 2017 build model s so it's still 2017 model year but it's practically a 2018 um and with that i mean you gain a pretty far out warranty right uh it was one of the reasons why i decided to purchase this car is because this vehicle and at the time tesla had unlimited mile uh battery and motor warranty so i am still in 2024 with 100,000 miles I still have uh, another year, 18 months or so left of my battery and motor warranty. It's, it's going to go out to December of 2025, and there's no limitation on mileage, which is great for me because I'm doing 30 to 35,000 miles a year commuting uh, with my various jobs, and uh, it's a, that was that, that was a huge you know I mean in terms of like putting high high mileage on a Tesla. I think the peace of mind of having that unlimited warranty is great when you're buying a used car. And, and those warranties are transferable between owners, right? Um, I, I did a little research before this. I was trying to find like, when did Tesla end the unlimited mile warranty? And you can still buy a 2020 Model S, maybe like the first half of the year, 2020, with the unlimited mile battery and motor warranty. So if you're in the market for a used Model S, I would look at 2019 to 2020 models and get that unlimited battery warranty. So you're still, I mean, if you buy a 2020 now, you're, you're probably good until what, 2028 unlimited miles, which is, uh, if you drive a lot, I think it's uh, worth, worth taking advantage of. Um, so yeah, that's the specs of the car. And uh, yeah, it just, it's been a beautiful ride, comfort-wise, space-wise for my family, storage-wise. Um, you know, it's checked all the boxes. I've been, I've been really happy with it. So I just wanna just talk about briefly why I decided to get this car over a used Model 3. I was leasing a Tesla Model 3 in 2021. I changed jobs in 2022, and I needed to get out of that car and get into one where I could put miles on. 
Um, I had a 15,000 mile a year warranty on my Model 3. It was a great car, and the crazy thing was, that year through 2021, the car had appreciated so much that I actually was able to end my lease two years early with Tesla and not owe a single dime when I turned the car in, which is, that just doesn't happen. It'll probably never happen again, or I could be in a situation to just give the car back and still have two more years left of payments and they took the car back zero dollars due super easy process i said goodbye and uh, i purchased this car i think like i said june 2022 um so at the time the price difference between this car and a new model 3 was maybe only a couple thousand dollars and you know i test drove this car i really fell in love with it i wanted a hatchback I wanted like the comforter, the, the comfier ride. Um, having been in the Model Three, and it wasn't going to be drastically different buying a you know, 2022 model. Um, I love the performance of it. I mean, the dual motor is great. It's a fabulous car. Um, so that was kind of why the pricing was so similar that I decided to kind of, you know, take the dive into this. And again, the warranty, fantastic. Um, there were some modifications I knew I wanted to do to the vehicle um, which I'll talk about in a second but um, yeah that was that was really the reason why I decided to go with a used Model S as opposed to a new Model 3 and honestly it might be the same reason as uh, some of you know my viewers why you would get into a used Model S instead of a new Model 3 today the price is probably pretty comparable uh, between the between the two vehicles now so I just want to talk about you know some of the, the small modifications I made on this car, uh, which I think give it a little more character, make it stand out, make it a little more modern. Um, the first thing I did was I did the chrome delete. I got this kit from uh, Test Bros, I believe. I think it was about maybe 200 bucks, 199, and it came with the. I mean the kit was fantastic. I put this on a little over a year ago, and. I've really had no problems. I want the gloss black. I think it looks, you know, a little classier. I, don't, I mean, the matte looks great, but I prefer the gloss. Um, it came with all these pieces pre-cut. You know, I did, did I do it perfectly? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, it took me probably like eight or nine hours to do the whole car. You know, you do all these pieces um, in the front here. You know the, the logo there but in the front trunk you do you do the um the fog light area here right and then obviously all the trim the mirror was a total pain in the ass i think there's like six or seven pieces for the mirror got it done again um don't look underneath it it's not perfect um door handles weren't too bad Th these trim pieces i mean i just i got to go back and just uh fix some of the chrome i you know i just did I get it on perfectly every time? No. But the cool thing is they actually give you um, an additional uh, copy of each trim piece. So I have like some extra door handles. If I need them, I can go back um, and, re and repair it. You get this this trim piece here, which is put on. But, you know, it's just, it's just 3M, like automotive um, gloss black tape. It's been great. Um, I bought this like knockoff tesla carbon fiber spoiler it has not flown off yet so i take that as a plus um and really the only other thing i did you know on the exterior of the car i painted my well i didn't do it myself i had a professional do it um i painted the the the, the silver slipstream wheels um gloss black i really like the way it comes out you got to keep them clean which mine are not perfect, but um, yeah, I just, I love the look of the car um, with the chrome delete and the black tires now and the red paint, I think it looks pretty, pretty slick. Um, in the inside of the car, what did I do? Well, nothing much other than, can I open the door? Yes. Other than getting the MCU upgraded. So when I, the first thing I did when I got this car was there was MCU, um, one, which was the original MCU that comes, the computer that comes with the car, infotainment system. Um, and it was pretty laggy. It functioned, you know, no problem. 
um, you know, everything worked. It just was laggy. And I just, you know, coming from the Model 3 just was driving me crazy. Um, so I upgraded the computer system. I think I paid about $2,000 at the time. It was a little more expensive than I think what's offered now. Maybe it's like 1700 bucks to get the computer swap. But you get, a, you get a brand new updated display, like the physical display, not just the innards of the computer updated. And also this screen here is also updated. Um, so with the older models, sometimes like these, the screen starts to like yellow and delaminate a little bit. Um, same thing with this screen. So they, they swapped them out, which was great. You get brand new innards of the car and, uh, yeah, it's been, it's been great. One way you can tell, you know, if you're looking at a used one and oftentimes like the people the dealer, if you're not a Tesla, they might not know like what the heck's in the car. Um, if you go to... Um, what is it? It's under software. Yes. You go to software, additional vehicle information. If the infotainment processor says NVIDIA Tegra, it is an MCU one. So MCU two uses Intel Atom, um, processor. So that's how you know if the, if the screen has been swapped out. Also, it should be pretty snappy. I mean, I mean, this thing, like a lot of these menu screens would lag terribly with the old one. Um, voice commands were like literally non-existent um, just because the lag was so bad. So that was one thing I did. Um, I would recommend doing that. I think it's totally worth the money. It just enhances the entire experience of the of the car. Also, little things like, you know, the um, the backup camera with the old MCU... Right, like I get the I get the fender cameras here. That's not a thing on MCU One. You only get the rear um, backup camera. You don't get the fender cameras, right? So that was another reason why um, you can't do Sentry Mode playback on on the old MCU. Um, so there's little things like that. Like there's no YouTube. I don't really use the entertainment too much on this car, but there's no video entertainment or anything on the old MCU. So. Um, I think it was totally worth doing that upgrade, at least for me. Um, but you know, if you're, if you're in the market for used Model S, sometimes the previous owners had those things upgraded at some point, right? So just, you can check and just check within the software. Um, the other thing I would all, while we're on this topic, I would check to see that the car is full self-driving capable. So it'll say autopilot computer full self-driving computer if it's not the case it might it may say autopilot computer 2.0 or 1.0 whatever it is so this has the capability i still actually have the free trial um for fsd but this is this car is fsd capable i probably will never purchase it for this car but i can subscribe to it you know obviously for 99 bucks a month or whatnot um but yeah those those are the real you know in terms of modifications and things i've done to this vehicle that is uh that's really it so the other thing i wanted to talk about is tires uh not a lot of people always talk about tire expense <laughs> with a tesla or other electric vehicles um, i think it's a combination of the weight of the car the torque and you know we like to have fun i mean so um i really have only gotten about 30,000 miles out of my tires. I probably should have changed those tires at maybe 28, 27,000 miles, but I tried to keep on as long as I could where it just was like, I have to get them changed because the, the the wear, especially on the rear of the vehicle, was pretty bad. So um, I am on my, when I bought the car, I bought the car 30,000 miles, right? I had the dealer put on a new set of tires for me Great. I actually had Kumos. This is what I have on this car now. Um, I ran those cars about 30,000 miles. I got new all seasons um, at 60,000 miles or so. It may, may, may have been like 65 or so. Um, I rode those till about 90,000 miles or so. And now I'm on my second set. So, I mean, for me, I know I'm going to burn through these things. So I just want to try to get the best bang for my buck. I want quiet, reliable tires. Um, I had a set of Goodyear Touring Eagle before this. I hated them, and they were twice the price. They were a little thicker tire. I just, I think, you know, it didn't look as sporty to me. Um, at least the sidewall of the, of the tire. But I've been rocking these Kumho. 
Uh, I think they're called like Solus Majesty. Let's see. Yeah, Majesty Solus. Here we go. Um, I bought them off Tire Rack. I got them installed. I saved a boatload of money doing it that way. Um, they are 245-45-19s. Um, the weight for this tire is appropriate for Model S, which is very important in terms of the wear. Um, and they've been pretty, they've been holding pretty well. You know, the thing is you really got to get your tires rotated every 5,000 miles or so. Um, and you know, I've always had like a little bit le more wear actually on the outside of the tire. Usually the like Model S and X are notorious for inside tire wear, but I've never had that problem. Those have been the outside. So, um, front is definitely, uh, you know, a different story. Just the wear is a little better. But again, if you stay on top of tire rotations, um, you're, you're probably pretty good, but I don't know, I'm curious of what your experience is, you know, maybe with your Model 3 or Model S. Um, 25, 30,000 miles is kind of the max. So, you know, be prepared for that. If you drive a lot, um, it's something to keep in mind in terms of electric vehicle expense. With that being said, with the gas savings I've had and no other maintenance items other than having to get, this door handle is not working properly right now, but I did have this one replaced um pretty early on probably like around 40 50 000 miles or so everything else has been functioning great i've had no other issues whatsoever with this car um suspension is something that's on my mind it's you know like the control arms the bushings i don't have any creaks i don't have any rattles um i you know everyone's like tesla build quality piece of crap right but i don't know maybe this 2017 model year you know, was a good year for Model S. I'm not sure, um, but I've had really no no issues. Like the car is not <laughs> falling apart. Um, things may change, I don't know, but um, suspension is something that's, you know, kind of like top of my mind. I think at some point I'm gonna have to get certain things replaced, control arms and whatnot, but, um, and they can get like a little pricey, but I'm not too, I'm not too worried about it. I don't really have any signs of, of anything like that. Motors feel good, acceleration's still very smooth. Um, you know, I might make, if you're interested, I might make like a Model S buyer's guide video because if you're in the market for like an older, like 2015 to 2019, let's say Model S, there's just a lot of different features on those vehicles and things that, you know, I think I would look out for when buying these cars like acceleration smooth like no shuddering in the steering wheel you know checking the suspension checking things in the software um you know battery degradation that sort of thing um but i've had none of those issues the car's been the car's been great um cold weather is i think a little difficult in this vehicle again i haven't had any like crazy issues just because i can supercharge and you know where i, where I teach I can uh, charge, which has been super helpful. It's one of the reasons why I decided to get an EV, continue on with an electric vehicle. Um, but yeah, it's been a great ownership experience and um, I'm looking forward to, to it uh, continuing. But, uh, take care. Um, looking forward to making some more videos this summer. I got a couple of road trips coming up with the EV9, which I'm gonna finally fast charge this thing on CCS and hopefully have a good experience, so we'll see. But uh, take care, I hope everyone has a uh, great day and I'll see everyone soon.